once I met Chris and saw his response and understood what he was thinking and, and the way that dovetailed, I thought, okay, uh, he, he He, he, he's the one who should take on Dementis. Furiosa unfortunately doesn't perform well at the box office, which is a bummer, because it's really entertaining and amazing. For me, the highlight of the movie was Chris Hemsworth's villain, Dementis. He's a real scene stealer. Every time he is on screen, it was intriguing to watch. Dementis is charismatic and loony. I couldn't imagine any other actor in this role. Hemsworth owned the character, gave him depth made him nuanced and obviously had fun playing him. It's one of his finest performances in my opinion. George Miller and Hemsworth delivered an interesting villain, but he's no immortal show, and that's a good thing. Let me share some wisdom with you. Dementus is wearing a cape throughout the movie, which changes or adds a new color every time the character enters a new face. But it's not only the cape where George Miller uses visual storytelling to indicate the changes the character is going through. He also shows it through Dementus' beard, clothing and vehicles. He even announces it through titles in his name. I was curious what the meaning behind his color changing cape was and found answers in an article by Vulture. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested. It basically goes through how the certain colors show Dementus' arc, step by step. Dementus, the religious icon. Before we ever see Dementus for the first time, we get hyped up through his followers that want to earn his respect by showing him Furiosa as evidence for a place of abundance. They are in awe and nervous as his opinion means the world to them. So for his first appearance he boasts a clean white cape. He wears it like the leader of a cult, giving off messianic vibes. He behaves like an idol, acts kind and hospitable. But soon we get to know his twisted cruel side. The Red Dementus, The Warlord Upon meeting a lost war boy who ignites his red flare, Dementus' cape becomes tinted in red. Now he refers to himself as the Red Dementus. The red symbols the gush of blood from the war he is ready to start. The war boy leads them to the citadel, where Dementus declares he will free these people from the tyranny of Immortan Joe. If he lets all his lieutenants and their underlings loose, even he won't be able to stop the carnage. The citadel shows them a glimpse of their power and Dementus has to retreat. Immediately after getting into war mode, he has experienced his first loss. But he is dedicated and has a plan to occupy Gastown. Dementus gives some goon an order, but he refuses to take it from him. I don't take orders from tiny little bitches. He only listens to his boss, Octo Boss. Man, these people know how to reinvent themselves. He sacrifices people from Lieutenant Octopus, which guarantees him to hold Gastown. But Lieutenant Squidchef ain't amused about the disposing of his people. What the fuck, bro? Dementus' victory came at costs he didn't consider, or maybe even didn't care. After successful negotiations with Immortan Cho, he trades in his doctor and unwillingly Furiosa too. The image of the white wearing messiah figure is obliterated. Comparing his power through his followers directly with Immortan Joe's. The war boys are happy to die for Immortan Joe as they truly believe in him like a god. Something Dementus only can dream of. The subordinate, refusing to take any orders from him, reinforces that he has not the authority we believed he had in the beginning. The sacrifices he seemingly had to make in this situation to gain control of Gastown led to dissatisfaction of eight-legged sea creature boss, who was separating with his faction afterwards. But he stays optimistic for his future and says something like, out of chaos we will create order. Immortan and the other ones seem to have nothing of it. But as he exits, he announces himself as the Great Dementus, the ruler. After the time skip, Furiosa manages to ride shotgun on the war rig with not Mad Max, who seems to be a genuinely good human being. They have to get gas out of the Dementus helmed gas town. The moral of Dementus' predecessor, which he carefully recreated, is now besmeared and ruined. Like about everything Dementus touches, he is currently not wearing his cape, but the vest from his predecessor, to underline that he gained the former's position. He obviously is not able to hold the town under control. He demands a meeting with Immortan and the bullet farmer before Furiosa and not Max escape. As the pair has plans to run away, they unfortunately get involved into Dementus' scheme, who was poised to get bullet farm under his wing. Dementus dons his cape again, but now it is also tinted black from the top. They ruin Dementus' ambitions along the way of getting out. But Dementus catches up to them. After capturing Furiosa and her friend, he blames them for his transition to Dark Dementus. 
Presumably his cape is tinted black because of the oil from Gastown. He is full of hatred and starting a war because he sees no other opportunity left. Or maybe he even does it out of spite. It seems like everything he was willing to achieve, his principles and values, are crumbling. Sacrificing his men without hesitation. The final confrontation has the Mentor stripped away from his cape. He gave it away for a last chance to escape, but Fury also caught up to him and is wearing it now. After finding out who she is, the Mentor tells her to beware of revenge, reflecting on how he went down the same path and it didn't bring him joy or anything for that matter. And neither would it for Fury also. Do you have it in you to make it epic? The Mentus is losing everything he's built up over the years, but he thinks if you are failing, you're gonna make it with style. Otherwise, you won't be remembered. Compared to Immortan Joe, the Mentus is an epic fail. Immortan is more competent and better in every aspect the Mentus aspires to. He has a blindly following cult who sacrifice their lives with goodwill. It has no repercussions for him. The Mentus, on the other hand, loses the trust of his own people and seems to get weaker for every lost man. Immortan is the better tactician at war and knows how to utilize his resources and army. The Mentus puts some dirt in Immortan's eye, but overall he can't match with him. Immortan Cho knows how to rule and keep his citadel and the people under control. The Mentus can't keep his people in place and prevent them from rioting. And this may be a stretch, but the three colors on the Mentus cape are the same colors on Immortan Joe's face around the eyes. White, red and black. The Mentus and Immortan Joe are two sides of the same coin, but one succeeds where the other fails. The Mentus strives to excel at the same things, but he is not capable enough. I'm glad the Mentus is like that, because we don't need another Immortan Joe, we already have one. The Mentus is pure chaos and disrupts everything he comes across, but still maintaining charisma. He is entertaining to watch in his attempts to make it big in the wastelands, and how he shapes and influences Furiosa making him one of the most interesting and memorable villains, not only in this franchise, but generally in recent movie outings. Thanks for watching. This isn't flying, this is falling with style.